Hello and welcome back to Kev's Vintage Tractor Repair Channel. In today's episode, we're going to be fitting the timing chain and tensioner and setting the crankshaft timing for our Ferguson FE3523C engine. So I hope you enjoy. All parts in this video are sponsored by MRQ UK Limited. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello and welcome back to Kev's Vintage Tractor Repair Channel. In today's episode, what we're going to be doing is fitting the, the time and chain, sprockets and tensioner to our Ferguson 23C engine. If we just go over to the engine. Okay, so here we are at the front of the engine. So I'm now about to fit our crank sprocket. If you remember from the previous videos, what we did, we marked all our timing marks from when we took, it, took the tractor apart. So we just have a quick look at the back where I've got the flywheel and you'll see the red arrow on the flywheel and the orange arrow on the block. All right, so what's that now telling me is the crankshaft and number one piston is at top dead center. So that's where we are at the back. These are the original sprockets. All right, at the minute I, I haven't got any um, new ones to pawn so they are a little bit loose but for the demonstration we're going to do these will be perfect now on the original ones that i know i've highlighted it in red but there is a very very faint line that's what we're, i've marked it in red all right it's a bit bigger but that'll do so we can see it now because our crankshaft is at top dead center that makes our woodruff keys or where this is going to locate down at six o'clock okay so that's where we're now going to fit this and then we put a little bit of oil on here make sure you get them the right way around on the original ones the time and mark is always on the front you've got these little this little shim pack as well which we took off originally we want that to go back on where it came from so we'll just slide this on it should find there we go find the woodruff key and there it is okay so now that's in the correct place. Some of the things you're going to see on this video, all right, might not be the way it says in the in the handbook or on other videos and things like this, but this way works for me. So you can take take what you wish from it. if it helps you out or little bits of it, just just do what you can with it. I'm going to try and do the video fairly slow. So if you want to pause the video at any time, if you're doing this, working on your own engine, you should be able to sort of follow along as well. That's the bottom sprocket on. Okay, so we've fitted the sprocket on the crankshaft and we now know our crankshaft is at top dead center. So now we need to find where our camshaft has to go. Now, when we took our sprocket off, there's another, there's a faint line, I've highlighted it in red. That's where that has to line up with that one so then we know the camshaft is in the correct place. When I took this off, all right, there was um, dot punch, all right, on there. So if we ignore the other one that's on there, ignore that one. We now know that and that, they're correct. So just put a couple of bolts in. You only have to just nip them, nip them up. We need to put this in the correct position for our valves. So if we just come around this side, I've put the push rods in for number one piston. So we've got our exhaust and our inlet, but we need to get that into the correct place so we can put the chain on. And we're gonna turn the, the camshaft in direction of rotation of the engine. And we're just gonna watch what our valves are doing, whether they're opening and closing. So if we turn it around, this was on the compression stroke anyway. So we've compressed, we've fired, exhaust blowing everything out now we're going to draw um, air in so we're going to go around then obviously it's now on its compression stroke so if i now go a bit further and i turn it you'll see the exhaust now opens all right so now we've just gone a bit too far so if i now bring it back so what we want to do pretty much is so our inlet and exhaust a rockin'. Can you see what we're doing there? This position of our camshaft is correct for our um, number one cylinder and our lines more or less are meeting together. I know now that is in the correct place, all right? I think, like I said, I've already said this before, this is how I do it. If you want to follow along, please do, but take what you, you wish from it, but this way works for me, okay? so. These are only finger tight. I know they're in the correct place. All right. So I know within reason we're, we're lined up. Here is our time and chain. What I like to do 
is I like to pre-fit everything. All right, have a practice run first because if you get this wrong, because this is more or less an interference engine, if you get the valve timing wrong compared to the crankshaft, when this piston is up at the top, and let's say your inlet valve is open at the same time, you're gonna get bent valves. Have a dry run first. This is a, a split chain. So what we can do, we can take this little C-clip off, draw out the link from this side, and then obviously it then comes into two parts. You can do it this way if you wish. It doesn't make any differences, however you, you find it most comfortable to work. But I like to keep it, keep it as one. So what we're gonna do, just lay that on my leg, take the sprocket off again, and we know we're not gonna move it. All right, so take that off. I'm gonna fit the chain. And there we go. All right, so it just slides, slides in. All right, so that's where we're, we're at there. Now we're gonna fit our sprocket. There will be a little bit of jigging around. Yeah, and I, I guess it is easy just to, to split it, but I generally like to have it this way. So that's on. Try and get your, your dots lined up as best you can. I'm slightly out for my holes in there. Okay, so what I need to do is turn the chain slightly. Don't be tempted to turn the camshaft because we now know we've got that in the correct place. So just a little bit more poking around and then you'll, you know, we'll get it. One more. We're there. I haven't turned the camshaft. All right, so that's stayed in its place. And the good thing with the assembly loop, which we've um, been using all the way through, it's sticky and it, it will stop everything from sort of spinning too much. So if we look at the holes, they're all lined up. Our line is through here, our time and mark there. The tensioner is gonna go this side. So if we put some tension on, it's not twisting it out of, um, Sort of out of time, and if you if you wish, it takes a little bit of jigging around. Ignore the green marks I've put on there. That's just just me messing about. Put your own marks on there so you know are, are correct. And never turn the camshaft. All right. So I knew I I know that was in the correct position. The holes are all lined up, ready for the bolts. When I put some pressure on, because this is where the timing chain is going to go, it's not going to turn the camshaft too far to push it out of time. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put these bolts in. I like to, whenever I'm rebuilding anything, is new, is use new sprung washers. We've got two sprung washers there. We've got the silver one and obviously the black one. Now if you look at them, the silver one, there's more spring left in that one and the, the black one is actually compressed. So if you think how old this engine is, it's 60 years old, it's sat in that position so long. So it's it's not gonna do the job it needs to. So and hence why I like to put new sprung washers on. We'll get our bolts, okay? New sprung washer and new washer, and we'll just line them all up. There is a little bit of movement in this sprocket. These holes are slightly, slightly bigger, so there is a still a little bit of movement. There's a little bit of forgiveness in it. That one. And that one. Okay, so here's our chain and sprocket on. Now, what we need to do is fit our tensioner. So if we come across to the table, our time and chain tensioners, these are oil pressure fed as well. So here's our original one, and here is our new one. Now, I like obviously our new ones because they're pretty much a carbon copy of our original one made in Great Britain. So if I take it out, this one, we, we know is worn. If we can see that sort of the, the shiny bit there and where it was running on the chain. There's also a spring in there. So if we get a Allen key, give it a twist and then it comes out. And there it, that's pretty much what's, what's inside. To try and fit this, obviously trying to hold all this together is not gonna work. As on the back, this little bolt, we can arm these this is, I'm, I'm talking about the, the old original one because the, the new one is exactly the same. So find the locators in there, push it in, give it a twist, and there it is inside. All right, so 
Imagine we fit all this into, into the tractor. Undo this, the back nut. Right. And then we can get our Allen key, locate it at the minute. I can just pull it in and out, give us a twist. And then there is the spring on there, it's under spring tension. So, all right, that's what we're gonna do with our brand new one. We're gonna fit as well, all right? So there's the nut on the back. I've already armed that ready to fit. But what I'm gonna do also, all right, to help us when we start, start our engine up for the running of it, is just fit a little bit of our assembly lube on here just to just to help out the start if i show you just on the back this little hole on the back is connected to the oil ways in the in the tractor all right so obviously this works under oil pressure as well as um spring tension as well so we'll grab our little spacer and our two um 7 16th head bolts so if we go over to the tractor here's where we're going to fit it so we've got our backing piece all right so make sure that lines up got one bolt in this little piece is going to go behind the chain. We'll just nip it up. Same thing again. Just just nip them up, and then um, we'll get them lined up. So there's our new tensioner. So do those up. Now that is under spring tension. As as it gets worn, all right, um, the the rubber and the chain it will sort of gradually go um, bring it forward, obviously, and oil pressure in there as well. All right, so that's where we want that. All right, so we've got the little bolt. We've now disarmed this, so it's now under the, the spring tension, and obviously it would work on oil pressure as well. So we're just gonna put this in. I'm not gonna pull the lock tabs down because I'm gonna change the sprockets on here because that's how I wanna put new ones on. There we go, all right? And then what we then do is bend the lock tabs. One goes underneath the, um, the little block there and one folds up onto the flats of the little bolt to lock it in place. What we want to do though is turn it. Now, you can change a time and chain with a cylinder head and in the tractor, all right? But like I said before, be careful because this is an interference engine, all right? To make it sort of turn over nice and smooth, if you still had your cylinder head on, take the injectors out and it will turn over nice and easy. And if you feel, and then if you find that the camshaft is wrong, all right, you're gonna feel resistance because you're gonna have a valve hitting the top of the piston. Then you gotta think, ah, I'm not right. Take it off, start again. You can, do it another way, drop the camp, drop the crankshaft so the pistons are out of the way while you're, you're fitting it as well, all right? But find the way that suits you, all right? This, this suit suits me. What we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil. Okay, and around we go, all right? You can see everything's moving together. Because what you wanna do, you wanna turn it a couple of times, all right? And if you can see your timing mark on the back, if you've got the engine out, you want to go all the way around until they line up again. There we go. Here we come. And there they are, lined up on the back. Hope you find this video useful. That's the end of this one, part one. All right, part two, all right, it's gonna be a little bit more awkward, and a little bit more um, complicated because what we're gonna do next is, if I just turn the engine to the side, what we need to do now is fit the injection pump housing, all right, and getting that correct so we can fit our injection pump, all right? And then we'll obviously put this one on as well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little video and hope you can sort of stop it throughout this so you can follow along and I hope you get it, get it right. So thanks, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.